If you've ever posted a guitar arrangement on YouTube, then you no doubt are familiar with this question. Do you have tabs for this? If you've ever watched a guitar arrangement on YouTube, then you might be familiar with asking it yourself. While there's certainly nothing wrong with using tabs, especially if you're just starting out, the truth is you may not need tabs as much as you might think. In order to promote learning and development, here's five reasons why you don't need tabs as much as you think. Number five, tabs are a useful resource, but not the final word on how the music actually goes. While it is certainly convenient to be able to find a free tab of your favorite song, it is important to keep in mind that these tabs predominantly do not come from the person who wrote and played the music, instead someone who merely interpreted the music. And if you ever played the game Telephone as a kid, you know the one where you sit in a circle and the first person comes up with a random sentence to whisper to the next person, who then whispers it to the next person, and the sentence starts out as something like, I like puppies and kitties. And then when the last person in the circle says what they heard, they say something like, I want a pepperoni pizza with no pepperoni. If you ever played that game, then you certainly know how different interpretations can be. Number four, many tabs do not indicate rhythm and other important musical instructions. If you study music in notation, then you'll be very used to seeing precise rhythms, dynamic markings, timbre and mood indications, as well as any other information the composer or arranger felt compelled to give you. While there exist some tab styles that have incorporated some of the advantages of notation, such as tab with rhythmic stems, which is a really cool idea, the more basic tabs that look like they were made on Notepad can be lacking all of this important information. This isn't a detrimental problem in itself, but any information coming from the music you're looking at can be added to your own creative processes, and for many of us, these things are difficult to come up with on your own without a logical suggestion. Number three, tabs are generally wrong. More often than not, the tab that you are using will not be accurate enough, regardless if it is a published edition or a free online version. I can't tell you how many times I've run into this, even with published editions of very famous music that I've paid good money for, and some of the oversights are just mind-boggling. <coughs> Metallica tab books. <coughs> Unless you're looking at a tab that was made by the guitarist who wrote or arranged the music you are studying, and they were very diligent in writing it down, which the combination of all this happening is hardly ever the case, your tab will most likely be inaccurate at best. Number two, if you only use tab to learn all your pieces, you are missing out on building important skills gained from other learning processes. We all have our own preferred methods of learning, and that's good and well. But if you want to better your craft, become more well-rounded, and strengthen your weaknesses, a good way to do this is to learn music in a variety of ways. We've already discussed some of the intricate detail you will typically find when using music notation. Learning by visual example, which probably happens a lot if you take guitar lessons, is very beneficial in recognizing the movements of someone else, their effects, and how to mimic and control them yourself. My personal favorite learning technique is learning by ear, which brings us to number one, and this is the most important one. Tabs don't tell you how to play a piece of music. Your ears do. Your ears tell you if what you are playing is right and if what you are playing is how you hear and interpret the music. If you are a musician, you have to use your ears. Strengthening and depending on your ears to govern all the things you do as a musician is not a benefit, but a requirement. This is how music lives. You can write it down or analyze it, but it's never alive until you can hear it. Therefore, if you consider yourself a musician, then using and relying on your ears is your top priority, and learning music by a sequence of numbers on a page certainly does not encourage this. If you really want to not just know your piece, but get to know it, internalize it, memorize it, and interpret it, and it's not a super complicated piece in which you probably will need something to look at, 
then try learning it by ear. For many people, I know this is a daunting task. But if you can stick with it, you won't believe the skills you will gain in the process. I promise. Your ears can grow and develop, almost as if they were muscular in nature. Even most people who are convinced they are tone deaf can improve this ability. Just like anything else, it takes specific exercises, work, and persistence. If you've worked hard to learn a piece or a section of a piece by ear, and then you want to compare what you are playing with a tab, then feel free. At this point, you will be using the tab as more of a resource and less of a crutch. If you are interested in some exercises that can help improve your listening skills to better prepare you to learn music by ear, then come join the A Guitar community. Here you'll find a ton of instructional content, as well as a forum to ask questions if you need more help. What is your experience with using tab? Which of these points do you agree or disagree with, or simply find interesting? Let us know in the comments, and thank you very much for listening.